everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor for those of you who have never been here before and today we are talking about The Sims 4 Journey to Batu. So welcome to launch day for this new game pack in The Sims 4. This is probably something that a lot of you didn't want. There might be a couple of you that are here and like, oh maybe Journey to Batu could be cool but I'm not sold yet. Um, <laughs> hmm. uh, I played it. I don't think I like it. I don't think I like it at all. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed. And I really wanted to make a video kind of talking about all of the things that bothered me about The Sims 4 Journey to Batu in an everything wrong with type video. And I just think that this is something that you guys need to know to be informed consumers on a pack like this. I don't want you to go out and buy this thinking it's something that it's not. So we're just going to go into everything wrong with each different section. We're going to talk about cast, we're going to talk about build by, gameplay, the world, and then my overall thoughts and we'll see how it goes. So when we saw the trailer for The Sims 4 Journey to Batu, it was kind of like maybe we're getting improved aliens maybe they're making a cool new alien occult system and i know that a lot of people were kind of excited about that that's not what's happening here um in create a sim the costumes only cover your face and then some of them change your skin color but like weirdly and then some of them cover like from elbow to fingertip and like knees to toes it's very very weird and i don't like it they are just hats or costumes like they're they're not actually in a cult. They're not, it's just a sim dressed like that who's walking around that you can talk to. They're not any new kind of gameplay that you can have. No, no. It's just hats and masks and no actual gameplay added. So that sucks. The next thing is that one of the masks looks so bad that it honestly looks like someone's first attempt at making Alpha CC. Like it's not good. It doesn't look good in The Sims 4. It does not make sense that this is the texture that they used when they should know what The Sims 4 texture is at this point and it's just disappointing and I'm just upset that it's in the game. I don't know why it bugs me so much, but it doesn't match The Sims 4 at all. Not even a little bit. Something that really disappointed me is that we didn't get any new traits with this. So you can't get like I know that we already have like a geeky trait in the game, but I feel like you could have had like a Star Wars lover trait or something like that, where it like, could kind of like guide your kid or teen sims and like give them a little bit more personality, maybe make them super nerdy and love this stuff, but that didn't happen. We got no new traits, which is always disappointing to me because The Sims 4 needs traits. The Sims needs traits to have sims feel different from each other, and this game lacks that so much. So I was hoping that they'd add something, but they didn't. And then we go to the aspirations. <laughs> So this bugs me for a few reasons. A lot of people might not see this the same way as me and I understand that, but they added a new category for aspirations that are just Star Wars aspirations. So you know how we have knowledge and family and location, like all of those different categories. This added its own category. And I don't know why, but it's something that really, really irritates me. I don't want Star Wars to be a category in my game if I have this installed just because I'm a Sims collector and I have every single pack. I don't want it to have a category when I'm in cast. I think that it should be an, in another category, but obviously there was some kind of deal between Disney and EA to not mix any of it because that's just how it seemed to go. But then the actual aspirations are just kind of a walkthrough. Like there's two to choose from, which is fine. Like two aspirations for a pack I don't care about. Sure, why not? <laughs> I feel like I'm going to come off as like really complaining in this video, but I just don't want anyone to spend their money on something that's just disappointing. The aspirations follow kind of like the island living, city living, like walk through like, oh, go do this thing and do this thing and do this thing, but it's not actually like going to change your life very much. The only thing that's cool about these aspirations is the reward trait that you get when you choose one of these aspirations. It actually makes it so that your sims gain a little bit of their needs, like they all, their needs all go up a little bit when they're traveling, which I think could actually be pretty useful overall, but that's the one where, that you get only when you choose it from create a sim. So you'd have to have a sim who turns into a teenager or who you create and you pick one of these aspirations right off the bat for them to have that anyway. So it's not like you can actually earn it and then go on to something else in your life. It, yeah, bugs me. But now the actual create a sim assets. All of the stuff in create a sim is very Star Wars. Of course, it's going to be very Star Wars in a Star Wars game pack. However, it's not versatile at all. I feel like the Sims team realized that they're able to like layer clothing, you know, put a shirt on top of a shirt on top of a shirt, and they did this for almost everything in this pack. There's so much layering. And like, I just don't like it. <laughs> um, a lot of the costumes are really well done, they look really good, but I just, we're, you're never going to use this in your regular gameplay unless you wear it as a costume on like spooky day, but you're not going to wear it just walking around unless you're like a super Star Wars fan and that's something that you're interested in. But I just don't see most players wanting that. I don't, I don't like them. I don't like them at all. <laughs> Another thing is that there are some outfits where you can't remove the shoes and being able to remove shoes and customize outfits is like a big part of The Sims 4. I remember in like The Sims 2 the shoes came with it and sometimes you hated the shoes but you loved the outfit and it really irritated you. 
but I assume that this is because it's like Disney's intellectual property or whatever and like they're very strict with their IP and they don't want people to change it at all. So it makes sense, like they want to protect it, but like no, that's not how The Sims works. We're, we should be able to pick our own shoes. So those are kind of all of my thoughts on Create a Sim. So now let's go into the Build Buy catalog. The first two things I noticed is that we got another picnic table and we got another bar. These are two items that we definitely do not need. I'm just glad we didn't get a weird shower and a weird toilet like they seem to want to do in every pack because like the eco lifestyle ones are not versatile at all and they were completely pointless. I hate them, <laughs> but like, it seems like the team loves to give us toilets and showers. Yay. A lot of the build by stuff is totally not versatile unless you're building a very specific industrial, like, funky place. Like you might be making a bar that looks really cool with all these items. I just really don't see people using this in their regular homes that they're going to build. It's going to be more of like a community lot maybe. I don't even know where you would use this to be honest. Some of this stuff would look really cool in like a rundown build. And also some of the floors are actually kind of nice. So we got some nice tiles that are surprisingly like neutral. But other than that, I'm not a big fan of anything in this at all. I just, I'm, I know I'm not going to use any of it. I don't even know why I bought this other than to make videos about it and to make articles about it but other than that I'm like why am I here? <laughs> One thing that I kind of see as a missed opportunity in a way is that they didn't actually like add any Star Wars like fun things. Like I think that they could have added like a Star Wars set of bed sheets or something for kids to have or like Star Wars notebooks or backpacks or like little things like that that could kind of have like a dorky kid who loves Star Wars or a teenager who's super into Star Wars or anything like that where they can own this stuff or like posters on the wall like things like that that are more versatile for players that aren't gonna want this pack for what it actually is. I think that they missed an opportunity there to kind of bring some of those people in like people like me but I don't know most people might not even think about stuff like that but I just want more stuff for families so bad. So one of the biggest disappointments in this pack for me is the world overall. I am so just irritated by it. First of all, to get to the world, you have to go to the take a vacation menu on your Sims phone, which I think is weird because it's like along with Selva Dorada and Granite Falls. But in those places, you're actually going on vacation and you're choosing the amount of days to go. But when you go to Batuu, you can stay for however long you want. It's just weird. It's just a weird thing. <laughs> I wonder if they like thought about making it its own thing, but then decided not to. I don't know what the vibe was there, but I just don't understand why they did it. The next thing is that this is an exact replica of Disney's Galaxy's Edge, which is just like, it just feels like a giant ad for a theme park. It doesn't feel like a Sims world. It doesn't feel like the team got to put any creativity into it because they were just building something that already exists. And I, I can feel that when you're there. You're just like, like, yeah, it looks beautiful. Aesthetically, this world is gorgeous. It's so pretty, but I don't like it. I don't know. Another thing is that you can't live on the like, in the world. You can't live in Batu. You can't actually spend all of your time there. You could stay for as long as you want, but you can't actually build your cinema house there and stay there forever. So that's kind of disappointing. I know that a lot of people are kind of into that kind of gameplay and would want to stay there forever, but you can't do that. And the entire world is just shells, which is just so upsetting. So like in the main section in the middle of the place, you have like a bar that you can go into and it's pretty cool looking. The ceiling looks kind of cool, but then everything else you can click on and do things. You can go change your outfit or like go get food at these places, but you can't actually go into them. So it's just a bunch of shells and I'm just like, oh my God, okay, I understand. I understand that making all of these real places that you can go into takes a lot of resources. I get that. However, if this is going to be a Star Wars pack, I want them to do a Star Wars pack and I want them to do it well. I don't want it to be something where you just walk up, click on it and be like, oh, get food. And then your Sim gets food, just like it pops into their hand. Like, no, no, I want places they can go, places they can go inside of. Most of this pack you're spending outside because it's just a bunch of shells that you can't go into. I honestly feel like I'm ripping my hair out because I'm so disappointed that they even decided to make this pack. And it's just, it, yeah, anyway, so. When I made my reaction to the trailer for this, a lot of people were like, well, maybe the gameplay is going to be really good. The answer is no. Uh, the first thing that really bugged me is why did they waste a lot of time in The Sims to change the loading screens just for Star Wars Worlds? I think that that was just kind of a waste of resources. It might have been something easy that they could do just to make it feel more like Star Wars, but like no one cares that you change the loading screens. It's so silly. It's such a waste of time. I hate it, but it's number one. Um, if you're the type of person that hasn't watched Star Wars, you're not going to know what you're doing. You're not going to know who you're looking for. You're not going to know what to find. Like, you're just going to be so confused and just have no idea what you're doing. So I'm just... Anyone who's not a Star Wars fan is not going to have fun playing this. They're not going to understand what's going on. And I feel like with Strangerville, you can understand what's going on because it felt very simmy. Like it felt like you're going to talk to scientists. You're going to talk to... to <laughs> 
You just don't know what you're doing if you haven't seen Star Wars, and I th find that really irritating. The gameplay in this is extremely repetitive. Like, the whole first section of one thing that I had to do was, like, ask people about scoundrels. You had to do that three times. Ask people about the First Order. You had to do that three times. Ask people about the Resistance. You had to do that three times. And I'm just like, I don't want to talk to Sims. I don't want the only gameplay to be to talk to Sims. That's so boring. Another thing is that the droids don't really do much. Like, you can bring a droid home with you, which is kind of cool. But overall, like, they're just... <laughs> They're just there. Like, I'd rather have a servo than a droid. Plus, having a droid in The Sims 4 kind of, like, breaks that feeling for me because it just feels like something I know about in real life and then it makes it not feel like I'm playing a simulation game. And that kind of bugs me and I don't like that at all. Overall, the world is gorgeous, but there's just not enough gameplay. And I'm just disappointed in the way that the gameplay actually works. Another thing that bugs me a lot is that none of this actually matters in your sim's life. So when you go to Batu, your sim will probably change their clothes. I had one time where they didn't change their clothes right away, but then they ended up changing their clothes a little bit later. So they change into like Star Wars-y clothes, which I think is interesting. So you can't like dress your sim up in like cute summer clothes and then have them go to Batu and wear those cute summer clothes. They'll end up wearing Star Wars clothes, which I'm like, really? You can't just have sims clothes in a Star Wars world? Anyway, that bugs me. So it changes your sim's clothes. There's a different kind of currency, so any money that you earn on Batu doesn't actually get into your sim's household funds, so you can't actually use that for anything when you go back home, which I kind of find disappointing. I really would like to be able to have the same currency so that it actually affects your gameplay in a more meaningful way. It adds like a new job category while you're on Batu, but it goes away, which I think is actually kind of cool that it adds it and then it disappears when you're not on Batu, but it does just bug me that it doesn't affect your sim's life in any way. Like, at least the droids can come home with you, you can bring a lightsaber home, but like, other than that, it doesn't change your sim's life in any meaningful way. Like with Strangerville, which I'm going to compare this to a lot because it's kind of the same vibe in my mind, like your sims were able to live in Strangerville and earn money in Strangerville and join the military career maybe, and then that affects this game and all of this stuff, and they were able to make friends and like invite their friends over, like it's just, I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> Some overall thoughts that I had. So I was watching a channel on YouTube who was given early access to this. And it kind of bugs me that channels, like Star Wars channels were given early access to a Sims pack, but there were some big Sims channels that didn't get early access. I find that a little bit suspicious. But anyway, a channel called Battlefront Updates here on YouTube has played tons of Star Wars games, obviously, if they're Battlefront Updates, but they've never played The Sims 4. Their girlfriends really into The Sims 4, so they got some insight, but they were given an early access copy. And even they said that a lot of the gameplay was just like talking to people, clicking on an object, and the game kind of did it for you. You weren't actually putting in any effort, which is... Like for someone who loves Star Wars, and someone who obviously has a channel based on Star Wars and Star Wars games and plays them all the time, for them not even to enjoy this really disappoints me. A lot of the discussion around the time that this was announced was that people who love Star Wars are going to love this pack. But kind of the overall consensus that I've gotten is that even people who love Star Wars are disappointed, and that really disappoints me. <laughs> like, this isn't gameplay that a real Star Wars fan really, really wants, unless they're just a casual fan. They would rather go play games like Battlefront and all of those kinds of Star Wars games that are Star Wars, where they can actually go and do all of the things and not just talk to different Sims. I don't know. I just don't see this bringing in people who don't already play The Sims in a long-term, meaningful way, like maybe they thought it would. I'm just disappointed because the Sims team really does have the ability to do this stuff well. They did Strangerville well, they do occults really well, and I feel like they could have just taken this further and made it more interesting. I just, if you're gonna do Star Wars, I want you to do Star Wars. You know, I want you to go full out and not just make it feel like it's just a giant ad for a theme park that doesn't need more advertising. I was actually watching Lil Simsy play The Sims Medieval, and it just made me think about how this, sh honestly, could have been a really cool spin off game. Like, the Sims journey to Batu, like it could have been something really cool if they kind of just like took it that extra mile, made it its own entity instead of adding it to The Sims 4 and kind of half-assing it if we're being honest. I just wish that they would have taken it one step further and they could have even charged more for that game than they can for a game pack and it would have been better. And I know that I'm being really negative in this video, but honestly there's just so many things about this game pack that I just don't think we needed. Like. There's so many things that people actually want and they just didn't do the, this well enough for me to be okay with it. And I don't like, <laughs> I love The Sims and I will always love The Sims. My entire life has revolved around this game. I love it so much. It's now my job to play The Sims. Like that's so cool. But I just, I want the team to do things that actually make sense and not just do things because they think that they make sense. I don't know. I don't know. 
And I really don't want this to be any hate towards any of the sim gurus. I don't, I know that none of them made this decision to do Star Wars. I know that this comes from like higher ups, especially because EA does have the rights to make Star Wars games. So it was definitely a higher up decision and it probably wasn't one of the sim gurus just being like, we should do Star Wars. I doubt that. But they just kind of do what they're told and it, I'm just disappointed overall and I really wish that this could have been something that I was skeptical about at first but then was impressed with. But that's not what happened and that disappoints me quite a bit but that's all I have for you guys in this video. That's everything that I found wrong with The Sims 4 Journey to Batu. If you have any video ideas for this pack that you want me to go over, please let me know in the comments because I'm kind of at a loss at this point. I really hope that you're having an awesome day. If you enjoyed this video for whatever reason, I'm just ranting, but give it a thumbs up, I guess. I don't know. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and I will see you guys next time. Bye everybody.